Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. And I am actually out in the truck today, this morning. It's kind of early. Uh, everybody is still sleeping at the old camper. And I just finished watching, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, uh, Amber's testimony. And I was like, I'm going to record this later. I'm going to record this later. And my mind just kept going and going and going. And so I was like, I have to go record this now. So I went out. I got a cup of coffee. I originally was going to do this. Um on the beach or kind of take a walk on the beach, but I just realized that this is the kickoff to season and all the public access areas where I usually go to, you have to pay. So next time. Anyways, let's jump into this. Now, what I want to do with this, because these are the thoughts that kept resonating with me watching this. Um, and I'm going to get into this in a couple of minutes. I want to talk about some of the, you know, the, the superficial layers of the testimony, which is about the actual case and the crime. Uh, but I want to go into a little bit more of examining, you know, the trauma, um, th those type of things, because I find that with these cases, I'm always interested, as you know, in the psychology, but, you know, I'm always curious, like, well, what's fascinating about the psychology? And I felt like watching Amber, I was really able to kind of delve into some of those answers for myself. So we'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to talk about just the obviousness of it. Um, here is this mother on a witness stand testifying in front of, stand, feet away from her ex-husband who killed all of her children. And that alone, I just, I can't imagine. My heart goes out to her. My hat, I tip my hat to her. I have utmost respect for her. I think she handled herself amazingly well on the stand. I think I would have been breaking down the entire time. Um, so, the t you know, the, the question, and I don't want to get too totally involved in little particulars of that aspect. Uh, you know, it is what it is. We saw it. it. It's very, it's difficult to watch. It's difficult to digest. You know, when the prosecutor is like asking her all these different things and you're just kind of hearing this historical narrative. And what's surprising to me about it, I mean, maybe not surprising, I don't know, is the fact that, I mean, she's like, you know, he's one of the smartest guys I ever knew, you know, which I think is also not going to help him in this situation. Um, you know, she talks about the anger that he had, uh, so on and so forth. And we hear these phone calls, and that was so ir I'm going to jump around a little bit. The phone calls when you knew that he was probably driving around with the bodies in the back of the car talking to her, were absolutely just bone chilling. So, but I think it's interesting to piece together some of their life uh, through her. Another thing that I noticed about her, okay, so for me, if I was her, I would be like, you're going to have to heavily medicate me up there. And this is one of the things that I kind of felt like, you know, wow, you know, the you go girl type situation. You know, she just felt or, or seemed so exhausted, so emotionally spent. I mean, to me, it was just like, wow. I mean, you're seeing that aspect. And so for me, a, an interesting part of the whole thing is that aspect is, is making that connection to be like, you know, I, okay, have I ever experienced a trauma like hers? No. Um, I, I've not experienced that level and, and traumatic way of losing someone. So I, I don't know what that's like. And that's part of the curiosity, curiosity for me at least, and watching that and not only getting answers, but it's that questioning of, um, how does someone maneuver that's experienced that loss? Uh, how does somebody act with the, you know, accused, you know, the murder, how does she act with her ex-husband and feet away from her? Um, all of these things are very curious to me, you know, because I've not experienced that. I hope I never do. Um, and so I find that fascinating to watch. And I just feel like, you know, for me, because then I also place myself like, well, how do I think I would act? And how do I think I would do this and whatnot? And so for me, I'm just like, another reason why I'm like, wow, you know, what, what a woman is because I'm like, would I have anything left in me to give to others after that? And because in my mind, I'm like, I want to, I would have nothing left to give. It would be all I could do to make it through the day. Um, you know, she's remarried. She has a child. And so that part, I'm just like, you know, wow. I, I find human resiliency is amazing. I think the human spirit, mind, all these things can bounce back way much, way more than probably I give it credit for. 
Um, and so I'm fascinated by watching. That's one of the things that fascinates me about these things. It's like watching that. Um, obviously, it was heartbreaking when she broke down. I mean, and honestly, like I said, I, I can't believe she made it that far without breaking down to that level. Because, I mean, when she was reading those letters, and again, it's one of those things where it, a lot of the questions I ask myself are questions I hope I never have to experience, such as, my gosh, you know, would I always have that thought, what if I hadn't have done blank, second-guessing, doing all this, even though once she told her story, because if you watch my timeline, I was questioning, like, well, how did she get, how did he get full custody? I was curious about this, and she answered that, and it made sense to me. I mean, I I was like, I, I gotcha, you know, she's just like, look, you know, he is the better provider, you know, I don't have anything to offer these children right now, so I felt like, okay, I get it. And I also get, you know, I mean, I have, I'm full of regrets and certain things and what ifs and, you know, I wish I had and things of that nature, you know, are some of them the equivalent of that? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to compare, I don't want to sit here and never get into the world of like, well, this trauma is better than that one and da, 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 you know, um, but again, hers is different than my experiences in life. And so I'm curious how she processes those and how she carries herself and answers these questions. And I thought she did an amazing job. Um, I, I really did. I just thought she did an amazing job for such a difficult task to have to do. And I hope that she's able to, you know, go on a, like a vacation after this or something. You know what I mean? Like just have like some time to herself because I know this had to bring up a ton of stuff. So, you know, this human and, and another aspect of, um, pardon me, of curiosity with the human experience and things of that nature is, you know, watching her ex-husband. What is he doing during this? How is he acting? What is he doing? And, pardon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just seeing, you know, what is that reaction? What is the reaction of the people in the courtroom? How do the lawyers act? These type of things. It's all very fascinating to me just to see how people interact. And I think that's one of my fascinations with true crime in these cases. So, you know, her ex-husband, you know, Tim Jones Jr., I mean, my gosh... You know, he just sits up there, and again, like I've said before, he seems to weep when it's something that might be like, oh, you know, I shouldn't have said that. You know, I'm listening to myself bury myself under the jail. Um, but, I mean, you know, I guess I was looking for something on her face, like, you know, oh, God, is she disgusted? And I felt like she just got up there and handled herself as, prof I'm going to use the word professional, Yeah, you know, because I don't know what her take is on... You know, say, like, uh, the death penalty and things of that nature. Um, I don't know what her beliefs are on that. If y'all do, let me know in the comments. So, you know, I can't get into that. I don't know what her... I just had the feeling that she's like, you know what? I'm going to get up there and do the job that I have to do to either put him away for life or whatever. I don't know what... I guess the best way to say it is I don't know what she hopes the outcome will be. Um... Because I just felt like she got up there and did what she had to do. And again, I'm just like, wow. You know, that would just, I mean, exhaust me. And I love her, you know, yes ma'am, no ma'am. I mean, it's just, you know, she just, I, I have a lot of respect for her after watching her testimony and being able to go through something of, of that nature. And so again, yeah, I just kind of want to sum that up because now voters are pulling in and staring at me. Um, you know, I just, I really love learning about the psychology of these cases and how people interact uh, with themselves, with the, the relationships with others. Um, and the whole nine yards, and I think that's one of the interesting things. I think the Watts case was very interesting to people for that. I think this case, because one thing about this case, too, is one thing that we see common is, I mean, these people aren't up there. I mean, yes, he had, I think that this guy had way more signs going on than Chris Watts did. Uh, but this, you know, Tim Jones Jr., you know, he had obviously some red flag stuff. But I don't think there was any red flag signaling, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Um, with this, and I forgot to say this, I, I, I wonder, and I was thinking this the whole time watching this, and tell me what y'all think about this, um, I wonder if he doesn't derive some kind of pleasure out of her misery and brokenheartedness, because essentially what I think happened is he wanted to get back at her, and getting back at her was killing those children, that was his way, I think he got so angry, because I mean, you hear her say he's always angry, he's always this, I mean, my father was just an always angry person, you know, I mean, it, we've all probably encountered, I mean, I encounter, encounter them all the time, for whatever reason, these people are drawn to me, maybe because I disarm their energy, I don't know, um, but please stop being drawn to me, <laughs> so my dad was just 
an angry human being. And so when you just ride out on a level of anger and then you have rage on top of it, it's never pretty. And she describes that. And so I just really think, I mean, you listen to these phone calls. I mean, I think he was, I mean, obviously playing with her. And I think the kids were collateral damage in his world. And, yeah, I can't help but think as he's sitting there in that courtroom, you know, silently smirking like, I got you. You know, they can do anything to me, but I got you. You know, I got what I wanted. You know, you up there bawling your eyes out because I killed your children. I took that away from you. I mean, I just feel like that's part of his M.O. I really do. Um, I could be wrong. And again, y'all tell me what you think about it. So anyways, uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue watching the bits and pieces of the trial and coming back to you with my thoughts on it because this is, I mean, this is such a fascinating trial and, uh, that's it. I love you guys. Drop some comments below if you like, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.